and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm sorry that I missed last week's video, but with Thanksgiving, I just wanted to have a nice relaxing week and not worry about shooting a video. And I've been doing so many golf videos lately, so I thought I'd mix it up this week and do a little q and I get so many questions, so I'm gonna try to find ones that I haven't answered in past Q&As, but I think there's gonna be a little bit of crossover because I seem to get the same one over and over and over again. So let's just get right into it. So the first question is, what is my lowest round that I've ever had? So I had, I've shot a 63, it was at the farms when I was playing golf at SDSU, but in tournament play, my lowest is a 64, and then I've shot a 65 a couple times as well. <clears throat> a little sexy voice there, I don't hate it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I've gone low quite a bit. I've never gone, I was close to shooting a 62, but... Uh, missed missed a short putt and had to settle for a 63 and I I can go low but I can also go high and so there's rounds where I can go really low where I'll like shoot a 68 or lower than that and the next day I'll shoot like an 80 so you never know it makes golf so much fun this next question is what do you say to all the haters out there so yeah I have a quite a bit of haters and I don't mind it I think in the very beginning it was devastating for me because I'm such a people pleaser and I wanted to be liked by everyone and so I actually started to change kind of who I am who I was and who I, what I was posting and doing everything I could to uh, please everyone else and I had this realization when I Obviously, I get a lot of heat for the clothes that I wear. And so I was trying to change up what I was wearing. And one day I decided to wear, I posted a picture in a turtleneck, black turtleneck, and black leggings. And the only skin that was showing was obviously my face and then my hands. And someone left a comment about my outfit and they said, wow, you look like a porn star. I can't believe you'd wear this. And I'm like, dude, I'm wearing a freaking turtleneck. Like I can't cover up anymore. And at that moment I realized that I can never please everyone. And so I might as well do what I wanna do, wear what I wanna wear, be who I wanna be, and just love who I am and not worry about what people have to say because someone's always gonna have something to say. And so I've been much happier now that I've come to find this like inner peace of loving myself and it's definitely a journey. There's days where someone will leave a comment and it really just kind of cuts deep. But I try to not look at those comments or when I see them try to just laugh them off because normally it's just a troll trying to get your attention. Anytime I do respond to them, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you responded. And I'm like, ah, oh, I fell for it again. So yeah, I just try to uh, not think of those comments and I have so many more people who are loving and supportive and love what I do and so I try to give them the attention and focus on that and not so much on the people who are hating on me. Okay, next question is, I want to start a podcast, advice for a newbie, tech-wise, or lessons you have learned. So, as you guys know, I have a podcast it's called Playing Around, and it was nerve-wracking starting it, for sure. I have never done anything like that before, and my only like speaking experience was through uh, YouTube videos, and so it was weird to not do any video component or rely on that and just have to come prepared to every single episode. And I think that's my biggest advice is being very prepared and knowing what you're gonna talk about, having your topics listed out, and you want it to be organic and fun and authentic, but you do need to have some preparation. And I think that's what's really helped me is coming in, especially if I have an interview, is really prepping, like knowing as much as I can about that person, having all my questions ready, questions that you think that you are definitely going to ask, ones you might ask and ones you're not sure if you're going to ask, but just to have as many as possible because sometimes you get an interview and someone loves to talk and the conversation goes in so many different ways and you don't have questions that you've prepared, but it, those are the, the the interviews that are so easy because it's just a normal conversation but then you do have some interviews where the guests they don't really <laughs> they don't really give too much of a detailed answer and so you have to have questions like lined up back to back to back because they'll give like a one or two word answer and you're like okay what's next <laughs> like what do I ask so those are the really hard interviews but when you're really prepared for them uh, it makes it so much easier and I think just having fun with it and also not being afraid to be vulnerable. I think the best 
episodes of my podcast have been the ones where I have opened up about personal struggles that I've dealt with or um, the new picture that was leaked or dealing with anxiety or depression or you know it could be anything but being vulnerable about your life I think is really important to the success of your podcast if it is going to be more about yourself um, but also find topics that you're interested in there's plenty of people out there who are interested in the same things that you're interested in and so if you want to do a podcast about i don't know food or golf or whatever your interest is go do it because there are other people out there who are craving that content so be authentic uh talk about what you want to talk about and if you talk about things that you're passionate about then it's going to come across um much better. The con is going to be so much better and more entertaining when you're engaged in what you're doing and you love what you're doing. I would say don't get discouraged if it's difficult at first or you're maybe not getting a ton of listeners. I you have to promote it. You have to work hard. You have to kind of build that audience and it takes a little bit of time. And podcasts are so different than any other form of content that, you know, it, it could be discouraging at first. So don't get discouraged. Keep doing what you love to do. Keep putting great content out there and then people are going to come and you're going to build that community of followers. Next question is, if you had to give one line advice about life, what would it be? Well, that one's difficult because I am only 27. I feel like I'm still learning so much and I'm just like a little baby. I know nothing. But I think one thing that has really helped me is to not take anything too seriously and have a really good sense of humor. I think that life is hard and it's constantly beating you down, whether it's relationships or work related or just <laughs> the everyday struggle of just being alive. Like it's really hard and I think that it gets you down and you need to find things that make you happy and things that make you laugh and to not take things so seriously. As I see some people who just like don't have a sense of humor anymore. <laughs> like no one laughs and that makes me so sad and I get it because life is so hard but really try to um, just have fun and enjoy the good things that are happening and try to laugh off the bad as much as you can. And I think another thing too is to not be scared. There's so many, and I'm working on this one, there's so many opportunities or things that have happened in my life that I've turned down because I was scared. I was scared of failure, I was scared of what people were going to think, I was scared of um, just, just uh, embarrassing myself and you can't do that. You got to take those risks, take those next steps because you're never going to progress until you do that, until you take that leap, until you take that next jump or the next step into something that's harder and more difficult and that will challenge you. You want to be challenged. Nico's drinking water in the background. He just ruined my inspirational, motivational speech for you guys. But I think you guys, you get the point. It's just having fun and really pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone and that's something that I'm definitely working on and I really try to do if I'm like if it gives me a little bit of anxiety and it makes me nervous instead of saying no I say yes like bring on that challenge I want to take that challenge because I'm going to grow from that next question is what is your Achilles heel of your golf game <laughs> I think you guys know this already uh, but it's definitely mental for me I have the physical ability to play at a very high level I have all the shots I I feel like my short game is one of the best short games out there like I can pull off any shot and I can do that because I never hit fairways or greens so that could also be ball striking could be a little bit of a problem but I think again ball striking comes down to my mental approach I just get so nervous and so anxious out on the golf course in competition that my hands tighten up my shoulders tighten up my body is shaking I'm just so nervous and then I can't release the club properly and I'm getting those quick hooks or those blocks and it's been frustrating because like you're standing on the first tee and you're like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where this is gonna go. <laughs> could go right or could go right, could go left. Like who knows? And that's so stressful and so scary when you're just like, I don't know. And you have to rely on your short game. So I think it's definitely ball striking, but ball striking comes down to my mental approach. Have I tried to work on it? Absolutely. I have seen sports psychologists. I have done, I've read books. I've literally done everything I could possibly do. And for me, just never, never happened. I still played at a high level, but I think I could have played so at, on the LPGA if I just wasn't such a mental head case. <laughs> and as you know, golf is like 90% mental, so <laughs> tough luck for me. Okay, next question. 
This one kind of made me laugh. So, <laughs> if a guy who loves you and is not financially strong, would you still like to be with him? So, it's funny because I'll see comments where people are like, oh, she's just doing this to find a rich husband or she's just doing this to marry a professional athlete. And my parents raised me to be very independent and that means being financially independent. I make my own money. I make enough to support myself, to support someone else, to support my family. I don't need a rich husband or a rich man to make my life better. And I, like I do this because I love working and I also, I, I like making money. I like making my own money and it makes me feel independent and I have been financially independent since I was about 23 now and it's such a great feeling because my family has had some financial struggle and I know how stressful that can make your life. And so to be able to be financially independent um, gives me a lot of confidence in what I do and I'm not doing this to find a rich husband uh, because I love to work. It's something that makes me really happy. I love creating content. I love being able to travel the world to different golf courses and do what I do. I mean, I have a dream job and I'd be stupid to give that up. And I'm not saying girls who do that are in the wrong. I know a lot of women just want to be a mother and that is one of the most rewarding jobs that there possibly can be so there's nothing against that but personally I just really like to be financially independent and to into work next question and this is the most asked question I always get are you single so I don't talk about my personal life well, I don't talk about my relationship status or really my family that much I do more in the podcast um, but I because I am so vulnerable and I talk about so many personal experiences, I like to keep something to myself. And that is my relationship with my friends, my family, and a significant other. I don't want to talk about that all the time. And I don't think people really want to see that. Like when I'm following someone, I don't really care to see like, unless it's like a relationship account or it's like the two of them. You guys, when you follow me, you're here to see me and my golf content. You're not here to see like, the person I'm with or my family. And so I never post a significant other family or friends. It's just pictures of me. I also just like, I don't want anyone's outside opinions affecting my relationships. Relationships are really difficult and you guys know that. And I don't need a lot of people coming in and saying negative things or trying to break us up or doing certain things. I just, I don't want that negativity in my life. I just never want to like bring people into that part of my life since I am so vulnerable in so many other parts of my life. You guys can have that, but that one thing is for me and for me only. And next question, when I said, <laughs> am I single is that that's the most um, asked question. No, I was wrong. This is the most asked question. Are they real? I get this all the time. I've already done a video on this one. I can link that one if you want to go check it out. But yes, um, the girls are real. I haven't had surgery. They are not um, implants. They are not, there's no injections, nothing, filler, whatever, you, nothing. They are 100% uh, real. Okay, so I thought this was an interesting question. It says, what role does your body play in your marketing strategy? <laughs> That's funny. Um, I mean, obviously my appearance and my body is, is important to what I post. I always make sure that my outfit looks nice, my hair is done, my makeup's done. Um, I know people follow me for those reasons. I know there are people who only follow me just to look at my body. And I, again, I've talked about this before. I don't really have a problem with that because I put in a lot of effort into working out with my diet, making sure it looks good. I'm proud of my body. I love my body and I don't mind if people follow me just to see that. But there comes a time where <laughs> I'm going to be getting older. Maybe I won't look this way all the time. So you have to have some stuff, some sup. Oh my gosh. See, I rely on my body because I can't even speak. Uh, no, <laughs> some substance to add to this so i always try to make sure my content's really great so i try to provide great instruction when it comes to my golf tutorials uh funny commentary when it comes to my podcast um interesting different content when it comes to my instagram account and then with twitter it's just 
again, just trying to be funny and entertaining. And there are so many platforms like my podcast and Twitter where I have say I can't rely on what I look like. So you have to bring something else to the table. And I think that is why, despite what some people say, I think that is why I have been successful because I don't solely rely on my body or what I look like. It's a double-edged double -edged sword because I know I do have followers because of my appearance, but at the same time, I think people only see that and they don't look past it. And so that has been a struggle with trying to get people to listen to the podcast at first because they're like, oh, what does this dumb blonde bimbo have to say? I mean, all she does is just look cute on Instagram. She probably doesn't even have a brain. Well, <laughs> like that's not true. I think once you listen to what I'm saying, then you'll see that I am more than what I look like. But yes, I, I don't shy away from my appearance. I like being sexy. I like being feminine and I don't think that there's anything wrong with that and I don't think that that should hold me back or that I because I know a lot of comments would be like well if you want to be taken seriously why are you wearing you know this top? It's like because I like this top. I like the way I look. I, I don't, there's nothing wrong with that. I think I can be sexy and also have an opinion. That shouldn't be two separate things. It's like pick one or the other. <laughs> Why? Why does it have to be that way? So yeah, obviously it plays into my marketing strategy, but everything does. You have to be the full package. You can't just rely on one thing and that's it because there's so many beautiful, smart, talented people in this world. So what can you do to set yourself apart? What are you doing that's different? But I also try to be more than that as well because when I do get older, I won't be able to rely on that as much and I'll have to progress with my career and what I'm doing and I'm okay with that. I'm trying to take those next steps to progress my career and be better and so I'm doing more media training. I'm, I'm trying to do more research. I'm doing everything I can to better myself so I can keep progressing so I don't have to just rely on one part of who I am. Next question. Have you ever thought about having an OnlyFans? And no, it's never really crossed my mind. I definitely joke about it because I get so many questions about having an OnlyFans. But I think this goes back to the last question where it's like, where does your body play into your marketing strategy? I think if, I don't see anything wrong with women doing an OnlyFans, I think it's a great way to have a amazing source of revenue. I mean, women are making bank off of OnlyFans, but I think once you do that, people only see you as one kind of thing, and I don't think that's right. I think that's wrong, and I, like I said earlier, girls can be anything they want to be. They can do anything they want to do. And But for me, I just feel like if I do that, it's like then it's going to be an even harder battle to be taken seriously or to do something else. And so that's just why I haven't done it. And also, I just like, I that doesn't really, I don't think I'd feel comfortable doing that. It's just something that doesn't really interest me. Um, I have no problem with the human body or being sexual, but it's just... I, I'm a little bit different, I think, than how people would perceive me to be. And the most risque thing I've ever done was Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. I don't really push those limits or do things, do anything like too, too sexy. It's just, it's really just not like who I am. And again, there's nothing wrong with it. And I really want to stress that because I think it's really empowering for these women to be exploring their sexuality and to be financially independent and to, uh, it's, it's great, but for me, it's a no. <laughs> Next question is, what's in my bag? So nothing's really changed in my bag since the last time I've done um, a what's in my bag or that I told you that I got the new driver um, or the new putter. So nothing's really changed yet, but I am going to get fit hopefully pretty soon because I've had some of those clubs for like such a long time that I feel like I just need a refresh and there's so much great equipment out there. So hopefully I will be able to take you guys along that journey of getting some more new clubs and trying uh, new equipment out, which I can't wait for because that's some of my favorite things to do is just to try everything and see how great it is but yeah I know I've had my clubs for like some of them for a while and I've had my irons for a while my hybrid my three wood and my wedges um, the only thing I've really switched out in last year would be my putter and uh, my driver so yeah pretty much all the same it's a mixed bag so it's I switched between the Mizuno driver and the TaylorMade driver the Mizuno driver I love both of them so the Mizuno driver goes straighter but a little bit shorter TaylorMade driver goes a little bit more, whoop, but it goes a little bit longer. So depending on what I'm doing, the course I'm playing, I'll kind of switch those out. Then I have my Callaway 3-Wood, two Titleist Hybrids, Mizuno Irons, P90 
PXG wedges and my putter switches as well. So putter's a little like I'm I think I'm gonna be switching putters. So shh, we're I can't tell you yet. I want it to be a surprise. Um, but I think it's gonna be really pretty and I can't wait to show you what my new putter is gonna look like. Last question and let's make it Ooh, okay. This is a good one. Interested in sports broadcasting, why haven't you done any work in TV? So, here's the thing. I love doing digital media. I think that's my wheelhouse, that's what I'm good at, that's what I love to do, and it's not that I'm against doing traditional media. I would like to venture into that at some point in my career, uh, but I need a little bit more training, I think, before I do that. It's just very different. I think with digital content, I'm able to be a little bit more free and I don't have producers or anyone telling me what I can and cannot say. And I, I definitely like that. I appreciate that because at times I don't have a filter, especially in my podcast. Um, podcast is very different than who I am on YouTube. It's a very unfiltered version of myself. Um, and that's, I like that I like being able to say what I want when I want to say it, but with traditional media, you don't really have that freedom, but I would like to do that at some point. I just haven't really, if I've had the opportunity, it wasn't the right time or I wasn't ready to do it. And hopefully in the future that I'll be ready. I've been, I want to get into doing more media training. So I'm a little bit more polished because I'm not polished. <laughs> I think you guys know that. Um, voice work as well. I know a lot of people comment on my voice and that I sound shaky and nervous. Um, maybe in the beginning doing these videos, I definitely was, but I feel like I've gained so much confidence now where I I don't feel like it's, it's shaky, but still I'll get some comments where people like you sound nervous. It's just how my voice sounds. And so I want to work with a voice coach to, to kind of change that a little bit so my delivery is better. It's just elevating everything that I'm doing. And I think that the people on TV have done the training that they've done so much work for it. And so I just need to prepare myself a little bit more for that because it is so different than digital content and Again, I don't know if I'll be good at that or if I'll like it because I love doing what I do on YouTube and Instagram and my podcast and having that that freedom to do and say whatever I want and to be an open book because I feel like there's so many people in the industry who are afraid to say the wrong thing and things that are important and that need to be said aren't said. So I like to be that person who can say what I want to say. So. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and my Q&A, tried to answer some of the juicy questions that I get, some of the golf questions, a good mix of all of them. And I know I mentioned my podcast a lot, it's called Playing Around, definitely go check that out. I'll link it down below. I think it's just a different side of me that you guys haven't seen before, something a little bit more fun. So I really want you to check that out as well as obviously subscribing to my YouTube channel. It's been growing, you guys are so amazing. Um, it makes me happy that you guys are loving the videos because I have so much fun making them. And I mean, like, like this video, this, see, this is why I need media training because I can't even do an outro correctly. So subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment down below if you have any more questions for future Q and A's. If you guys like the Q and A format, um, other videos that you guys want to see, just let me know. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you guys next Thursday.